yeah, just uh, another video on moles. I mean, it's partly on moles, but uh, this is how I get rid of them now. Just stick a crowbar in the hole, pour some gasoline, not too much, and just light it. You have to keep working on it, but they're uh, they're starting to all go away. Sometimes it makes like a big vacuum and it goes. Whoosh, just goes right on through all the holes. Even some holes you don't even see, like 10 feet away. Anyway, that's the, this is the real reason about this video is going to be. Uh, it's just something I wanted to talk about. I'm going to call it uh, how to succeed, how to make some money. sure that I can see myself okay where do I start I'm uh, 64 some of you might have saw some, some of my videos uh, but this is a different subject I'm not sure where to start. I might say the same thing over and over and I might jump around. I'll probably just do the best I can as, as the thoughts come to me. This isn't planned. So, how do you make money? And how do you make some good money? Not, I never wanted to be rich, but I never wanted to be poor. I wanted to have money to you know, play around with, buy a car, buy a motorcycle, buy a house, live comfortably. And then I might go back in time to tell you why, how I get to those conclusions. But anyway, when I was about, uh, shoot, I don't know, the first job I can remember, I was a paper boy. And, uh, and I, had, I had trouble collecting money. You know, my dad was an ex-Marine, and he used to kick my ass all the time, so I was kind of, t I was timid. So I want, and I also wanted to be out of the house all the time. So I, I deliver the papers, and they would never pay me, and I didn't know what to do about it. So I just let it go. Anyway, that's my first job. Then I, uh, you know, this is before you have a car. So then I uh, got a job like washing dishes, or a busboy, or working at Arby's, uh, fish and chips. You know, I didn't, I didn't know what I wanted to do, and I was never good in school. It, it bored me. I was a physical type of person. I liked to play outside with other guys. I liked to get muddy. I'd be in the rain. Uh, I would play some football and baseball and softball even as a, as a young kid, just for fun. Tennis. But now going back a little bit, my dad was a uh, was a. Uh, we came from Massachusetts. He was a. Uh, he got a job out in Silicon Valley in 1960 as a rock, I guess you call it a rocket engineer, but not really. Uh, he set up all the radar stations for Philco Ford to track the Jupiter program. He was a drinker, he was an ex-Marine, he was tough. I think he had PSTS, whatever you call it. He, used to, he was always angry. He was a good dad, he just, he had issues. Like, you know, I think everybody has issues. But he didn't kick my ass, so it made me kind of timid. I didn't stand up for myself. So, uh, you know, I got, and then all of a sudden, in about junior high, I grew a foot, and I had pimples all over my face, and my dad was still bullying me, and I started getting picked on at school. So th this is leading up to building up confidence. So I decided one day that I had enough of that, and I went, and I, uh, I didn't know what to do, you know, I couldn't talk to my dad, I didn't have any brothers, but, and I don't know where it came from, but I went to the army surplus, bought a duffel bag, filled it with a bunch of clothes, hung it out in the garage, and I just used to beat on it every day after, after school. And this was during the time when they were interracial, what's the word, uh, I can't think of the word, but they were mixing different uh, uh, student colors with each other. Can't think of the word for some reason. 
good stuff. Probably because I'm 64. So then I got in a couple fights. So no, so then the next time a guy came up and picked on me, I, I, I just punched him. I knocked him right off his feet. He was down. So I, it was that was the beginning of my confidence. So then they word got around that I was. I mean, most of the guys are short and they were Mexican. I'm not saying that I got anything against Mexican because I married a Mexican later on. So I ended up fighting every leader, every bully in the school. You know, it's only junior high, but they were in gangs. And I just, I had to, and that was the end of it. And then my dad punched me again right in the mouth. And I hit him back. Not hard, just said, more like, you know, that's the end, Dad. But anyway, it gave me some confidence. All of a sudden, I had some confidence for the first time in my life. No one, no one else is going to push me around. So, and, you know, in 69, they made, they made it to the moon, and he got uh, laid off. They downsized. It, it used to be, he worked for a company called Philco Ford. You don't hear that name anymore. But they were big in aerospace. They did, all, they did as I said, the radar stations, and they did the first computer systems, if you look it up, in the space program. Anyway, he got laid off, and here he was. He tried to get jobs, but he couldn't. He was overqualified. You know, who would want to hire this? I'll just call him a rocket engineer. Not that he was. Oh, by the way, he said the first satellite was sitting in his room one day. I don't know if that's true. I think it is. I never caught him lying. So anyway, he couldn't get a job. Again, this is going to lead up to me. But he couldn't get a job, so... I mean, nobody would hire him. He just, they looked at... You know, you, I've seen movies like this. You're overqualified. So he... Then he just sat around in his room for like six months. And I never saw him. I, I guess he was just a... A midlife crisis, I guess. Never saw him. But then he... You know, I think he always been kind of handy with his hands. Not real handy, but but he, he would he he I can remember he built he built a rowboat. Anyway, he he, uh, he put an ad in the paper. I, I remember, and we started doing whatever he could get. And I was a you know I was just a punk kid. I was still mad at my dad or hurt or whatever. I think we all have some kind of issues in life. So I said, sit right now, just get over it, forgive. So he started dragging me to work, and I hated it. I hated going to work. First of all, there was a dad that used to pick on me, and I didn't want to be around him. And I was a kid, you know. I'm, this is now me, an old man looking back. He was younger. Than, he was younger than me at that age. Now that I think about it. So uh, you know, I didn't know it, but I was starting to learn something. So I learned how to. Pain. You know, we didn't know how to do anything good, but we, what he did teach me is try, go out and try from nothing. And that's what he did. He, he inadvertently, because he, he got paid off, I mean laid off, and he was a, he was a drinking guy. He, he hid it from me, but I knew he did. But then he started. Then we started doing, you know, like fence post or, uh, uh, you know, anything, anything. And I never, like I said, I never liked it. I never, but I, I, I was learning. So then he somehow he got his contractor's license. By the way, we would, we were. I don't know if I said this. We were in Silicon Valley. We moved to Silicon Valley in 1960. It wasn't Silicon Valley then. It was. A, uh, it was basically a, I think Hewitt Packard was there, you know, there was no Apple or Facebook or Google. And it wasn't growing at that time, but he did start doing some hand, the handyman job. Like I said, I got off track. But uh, so anyway, since he worked at Foco, he was able to use that time to get a contract with license. You had to have four years experience construction, so setting up those radars, he had got the experience. 
So we got a license, and then he put, and then he, again, he, he was trying. And I didn't know it at the time, but I, he, he, he was teaching me. So I'm, I'm just sharing this. So then he, he started doing remodels. And now, if anybody is a carpenter that's watching this, because that's what I became, we would build walls. Like, I remember, uh, if you've ever built a wall, you build it on the ground, you nail it together, and you stand it up. Well, we didn't know that. I remember laying a two by four on the ground, putting a stud, and then putting a plate up on top. We just didn't know what we were doing, but he taught me to try. Just try. You gotta, you know, you gotta, for him, he had to make a living. He had me and his two sisters, my two sisters. So, you know, we, we struggled through it. He, he made a living. He didn't, he, he didn't make a good living because I can remember I was wearing clothes from Goodwill. But we had a house. We always had a house. I was wearing clothes from Goodwill and my mother was buying me all these weird styles. And that made me feel weird too. But like I say, get over it, you know? And then one day we were at somewhere, you know, this might have been a couple years later. I didn't work with him every day. I just off and on. But he made me go to work. And I, who was I to say no to my dad? He was tough. And I saw these carpenters uh, laying out of this house or something. I don't, if you've ever done a layout, you have to, you know, put on a, uh, uh, look for you on YouTube for layout. You really got to know what you're doing. The layout means you're laying, you're marking down on these plates how to how to put the house together. The compressor in the background. Hope you can hear me. So, um, so I decided, hey, what is this? You know, what are these guys doing? I've never seen anything like this. And then on, I decided I wanted to be a partner. And then I, uh, so I. Because I, I think I worked with him on and off for four years, and we kind of lied a little bit. I got my contract license. And then I started up the business, and I, I, didn't know, I didn't know what I was doing. I mean, I, I could fiddle through it, I could get it done. My dad had taught me just to try and get it done somehow. It wasn't a fit. But if, well, I had enough confidence now, if you, do, if you try, you could do it. So then I hired, I happened to hire, I got this one room edition, and I said I want to get some bids, because I don't know what I was doing. When I say I don't know what I was doing, it means I wasn't, I wasn't an expert. I was, uh, I, could, I could do it, but I didn't really know how to do it efficiently. Uh, when I use that term, I don't know what I was doing, that's what it means. So we got the job done, and these guys, they, they were a little bit older than me. I was, shoot, I don't know, I was 22 or 23. One guy was a one, one guy's background was foundations concrete. He could do anything concrete. I consider him looking back, he was a master concrete guy. In my mind. Meaning he had the confidence to build anything too, and he and he could do it good. And the other guy was a framer and he could do anything good. I mean really good. He could do the math and he just yeah, it's hard to explain. So they said, come work with us. And I was thinking, man, it's crazy. Because they offered me, like, uh, back then it was like, I don't know, 10 bucks an hour, maybe. Maybe less. Oh, by the way, when I first started, I was making buck sixty-five an hour washing dishes. That was the pay back then. That was minimum wage. So this is, this is like I said, this is back to uh, when I was 22, and I think and that was uh, 1977, I think. Anyway, I worked with these guys for like a year or two or three, I can't remember now. And by the time I was done working with him, and I worked hard, I, 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 I worked hard. And they treated me decent. I was lucky. I, got, I, I somehow fell in with some really talented guys, two guys, and we did houses and we did, uh, if you've ever been to California, a place called Casa de Perdo, we built a store there and a dance hall and built a little grocery store. So anyway, I've got this confidence. You build up confidence. You can't build confidence unless you try. You have to try things you've never done. So that's this is what this is really about. 
you have to do something you've never done before uh, well let's stop right there you have to first of all you got to decide you want to make something of yourself you, you don't want to wash dishes for your whole life you don't want to be a paper boy and I could see this was this was there was some money in this because the guys that were doing this had cars and trucks and they had decent clothes and they were a little on the rough side but I think I was uh, but that's like I said I, what I had been through I got I was kind of on the rough side then <clears throat> So I had confidence. So these guys ended up splitting up and they asked me, what do you want to do? Well, they didn't say that. This guy said, come with me. The other guy said, come with me. I went with the concrete guy. And uh, that lasted a little while. I, uh, in fact, we became partners, but uh, he, he owned a liquor store. And sometimes he wouldn't show up. I mean, maybe that's why the other guy, maybe that's why they split up. And he drank all the time, and I was starting to drink. It was like the thing to do in construction. You work all day, you're sweaty, you're out in the sun, you're hot, you stop after work, you have a few beers. Well, he just drank all the time, and I just said, I can't, I don't, I don't want to do this. So then I went on to do my own remodels, and I got better. And I, at that age, after about five years, I really felt like I really know what I'm doing. I'm really good, you know. I had a, I just, I felt that. But in reality, again, looking back, that was just the beginning. I was probably a journeyman by that time, but it, it just, anything takes a long time to learn. Especially when I, I did remodels, I'm gonna skip ahead, remodels, bridges, some high rises, uh, million dollar houses, dog houses, stores, hotels tilt-ups if I didn't sit there. I always wanted to go try to do something I had never done. I guess my dad taught me that. Try to do something you've never done. You're going to struggle through it. A couple examples. Uh, <clears throat> for some reason I was slow and I had wanted to get in the union. I wasn't in the union. So I heard about the union and I went down there and I signed up. You pay some money. But it's kind of humiliating, especially when the market's slow. It was slow. Silicon Valley hadn't really started to take off yet. It was, it was starting to sputter. I think maybe back at that time, Apple had just started. But they were starting to build. <clears throat> and uh, actually, I think I got confused. I think this is a little later. I think I went back to the union again. But the point of the story is the, the, war, the sign. Uh, the way they do it, you sit in these chairs and they do have a roll call and you have a number, you know, whoever, whoever signed up last has the last number. So I was like 70. And so this job came up, Bridges. And I'm looking around, and, you know, if you want the job, you go up. So everybody, you know, a lot of people hadn't showed up and one through 70 didn't want the job or one through 69. So I took it and I went out there And uh, the first thing, the, for, the foreman, I walk up, you know, these are all, I'm a kid, these are all older men, you know. It's funny, you look at me now, I'm the old guy, but I was the young guy then, I was the youngest guy. And you're, you're intimidated, these older guys. So you gotta learn to get over that. We're all just people. Age has nothing to do with it, size, color, nothing. And this is something I learned through the years. Anyway, the foreman said to me, have you ever worked on bridges before? I'm thinking, oh, what do I say? What do I say? If I say I haven't, he's just gonna say, go home. Because it's a whole different thing. And I looked, I, th I said, uh, and I thought a second, I go, no, I've never done it. He goes, oh, don't worry about it. He goes, I'll teach you. So, uh, and I had no clue what was going on. You know, it's, I can't explain it, but it's like, it's just a different world. It's still wood and concrete, but it's just how you do it. So he did take me under his wing. I did work with a bunch of other older people, but after, I think it was about six months, that bridge, or maybe three months, I can't remember. We did a lot of bridges. That bridge ended, I think this was Highway, Highway 87. They built a new interchange through uh, San Jose, I believe downtown San Jose to over near uh, 
Capitol Hill, if you're familiar with it. Anyway, then that job ended, and they, another foreman came over, and I guess I guess this guy had put, put in a good word for me. And then I got, I made, oh, I've got to say this right now. Uh, you know, I think part of because I was bullied, I was shy, and I, it, and, I, and everything. But I decided somewhere after I went to confidence, you got to make friends everywhere you go. This is another key to success: make friends wherever you go. In construction, they have carpenters, they got laborers. Make friends with the laborers too. No, that's another story I'll tell. Anyway, the, uh, somehow the lead man liked me, and, and the lead and the foreman liked the lead man. So all of a sudden, I was in charge of uh, not in charge, but I was. You know, the foreman's out figuring out stuff. So we were the guys signaling the crane to, to fly in the steel and the big timbers and, and uh, build all these massive forms. Again, kept building my confidence, trying new things. So anyway, I, I, you, you have to try new things. And again, I'm going to sidetrack myself. I like this car behind me. I had fixed my own cars. I mean, I had done oil changes. I had uh, probably switched a few four-speed transmissions, brakes, and that kind of stuff. But this car is just like way over my head. And if you watch any of my videos, and by the way, videos are way over my head, so that's a new thing. I'm just trying it. Why not? Push the limit. Always push the limit. So this car is just like uh, anything in life. You've got to try it. All my videos, you know, I don't edit them, mainly because I don't like to edit them. Maybe I'm too stupid to figure it out. Or it bores me. I think it bores me. But you'll see my videos in there. You know, a lot of, most people who have videos on YouTube, on YouTube are polished. And I, I was watching this guy, Mr. Lane, Mr. P, Tuba Khan, uh, last night, which kind of inspired me to make this video. And he says, he goes, three quarters of my videos I throw out. If I make mistakes, I throw them out. So I decided in a lot of my videos, I mean, I've been doing it without thinking, but to share that I'm not good at this stuff. But I'm trying to show, just try it. I'm not a welder, but I've, I've taught myself to weld. Not perfect, but I did it. I'm, I'm teaching myself how to do body work, how to do sheet. I've never done sheet metal in my life. Learn how to do that. Uh, I'm getting ready to do new fuel lines, and uh, in, again, you you have to push yourself. If you're not pushing yourself to try something, you're going to get stuck. Now, anyway, I became I, I went on to become a, the foreman. In fact, everywhere I went, they they put me in charge almost immediately, and I think it was because that I had this can-do attitude. And a lot of times they would say, can you do this? And I'd say, yeah. But I had never done it before. But I, but I, so then I'd, you, usually there's a day in between or a couple days. I'd go look at books. I'd go out to different job sites because Silicon Valley was starting to grow. And I'd see what they were doing and then I'd hire people and they knew something and we worked together. And pretty soon I got a reputation around that I could, I was the guy that could do anything. I wasn't the best. I was never the best. But I had a, I had some leadership quality, which probably came from my dad kicking my ass and the, getting the confidence to stick up for myself. So anyway, I, uh, <clears throat> let's see, where do I go from here? So I have a lot of, oh, one more construction story. I hope this isn't too long. During my journeys, another union job I got sent to, they, and I was still a young kid. <clears throat> they stuck me with this old guy. He was probably old guy. I mean, I'm looking back from when I was young. He was probably in his 50s. Just a rough old guy. And as I started working with him, he'd yell at me and swear at me every day, every day. But I decided that I'm going to keep my mouth shut. Because I want to learn. Wherever I go, keep your mouth shut for a while. Don't stick up for yourself right away. Just take it. <clears throat> so it turns out I'm working with him. He's yelling at me every day. I think it was just his way. But back then, I took it as a, 
as an insult or, or a challenge. Or, and I was also scared of getting fired. <clears throat> Turns out his, he, he was, uh, he was his, guy, his name was Bartowski. His son was an NFL quarterback, I learned. So his son must have went through hell just like I did. But his son had made it. Anyway, <clears throat> after about three weeks of this yelling every day, getting, you know, you stupid ass, you dumb, whatever. I think he was trying to push me to get me better. And he was just that kind of guy. I finally just said, hey, I don't want to say what I said, but I just, I swore at him and I just puffed up my chest, you know, I was 6'2", slim and trim, not like I am now. I said, whatever he said to me in swear words, I said it right back and I was right in his face and I meant it. I'm not saying I'm a tough guy, I'm just saying I had enough. And you know what he said? He looked me right in the eyes and he goes, about time, Bob. He, in other words, it's about time you stood up for yourself. That's what I've been waiting for. Never heard that one before. So we went on to become friends and then I, I found out, this is a huge site, big, like a couple acres. Forget what we were building. Some, because, it, because Silicon was Valley, we were building on a big industrial building. And the word got around that I could, that I, so that I worked hard and I could take it and I could dish it out because nobody else would work with them. That's one of the reasons they stuck me with them because nobody would work with them. One more story. <clears throat> what I was saying about get along with everybody. You know, I, used to, I was like, here I am, I'm a carpenter. I'm pretty good. I'm pretty, I'm pretty tough. I mean, that's, that's what you get. You get, you feel like you're tough because you're, it's like working out all day. You're carrying these piles of lumber. You probably, when you're, back then they didn't have forklifts. On a bigger job they did, but we carried lumber from here to there to build a house. Then you nail it up. You pick it up, you carry it here, and you up, and it goes second floor, third floor. So we worked out all day long on our feet, climbing, carrying, nailing. Yeah. Try it someday. You get used to it after about a month. It doesn't hurt anymore. But anyway, I got this other job, and they were building uh, two buildings. One was a building here and a building here. And it, somebody said, can you do tilt-ups? And I said, well, yeah, because that's what I always say. <clears throat> and a tilt-up is a, basically a, it's a, it's a building like this shop. It's got walls all the way around, but they're concrete walls. You pour the slab, you snap lines on the ground, you build forms, you pour these concrete walls. You pour them all, they're all over the place. And then you, a crane comes out and you lift them up and you set them in place and they weld them. Anyway, it was like a race. They were almost the same size buildings. And I was this new guy and everybody knew each other and I didn't know anybody. And I, I started asking the labor laborers to get me materials and they were just kind of ignore me and I'm thinking what the heck do I do you know and I had like five six maybe ten carpenters under me anyway that taught me a lesson get along with everybody so I started treating the laborers real good hey how's it going give them a donut a coke whatever whatever they wanted and then so pretty soon they were they were giving me the, all the tools they were giving me the help and in the end, and I had never done this before, I, I beat this guy by one by one day. Out of sure, whatever I had inside me, that drive, that determination to succeed. And the reward was one guy gets to be in charge of the crane, tilting up all the buildings, the other guy gets to go behind and line them, which is, I don't know if I can explain that, but get them straight. And I was still kind of humble. I said, let him do the crane, even though I really wanted to do it. Anyway, I got a thousand stories like that. So there, in it, there's, there's a couple, you know, there's different types of people. There's artists, there's uh, doctors, there's physical workers, there's sport athletes. But I've kind of noticed something. If you're good with your head, like like in school, I said, I, I was never good in school. In fact, I think my best grade and up through high school, well, I got one A in math. 
only because the teacher liked me and I felt comfortable. So he made me like it. But I got mostly a, a D's and F's. Why I got through school, I have no idea. They must have just wanted to get rid of me. Uh, I forgot where I was going now. <clears throat> Part of the 64-year-old brain. Oh, yeah. So, I got to add this, too. In high school, in junior high, there's the guys you look up to. There's the head, the big jocks, or the good-looking women, and uh, they're in this own little clique. And then there's these other people with thick, thick glasses, and they're kind of shy and stuff. You know, I looked back one day, and I looked, and a lot of those guys were in jail and prison, and they were just a mess. But the bookworm guys had made it. And I don't know why some people are, why some people are in that big upper cliques, and some people are in those lower ones. I don't know why. But, and I was like a dropout. I just hung out with a dropout crowd. We are on the edge of the school border, you know, trying to sneak away all the time. Anyway, I'm kind of losing track of what I was saying. Oh, so if you're really good with reading and, and memorizing and you like it, you're probably going to be, you're probably going to go to college because you have a memory for tests and you're going to pass the test. Me? Forget it. I never would have passed the test. I had, and I was physical. You know, looking back, I, I did this a couple years ago. I looked back and I was, you know, I, I thought everybody played sports and did that. But looking back out in the fields, you know, the, the baseball fields and the schoolyards, there was a group of guys and that was us, me and my friends. There wasn't any other. I mean, there was a couple groups, but I was like, not everybody was athletic and, and, and liked to get dirty. So I was in that other group. I was that touch guy. So I'm one of those people that I learn by touching. Other people learn by reading. There is no right and wrong, but if you're going to be if you're if you're going to be a, a touch person and you realize it and you like to touch uh, fix things. You're going to be an artist, or you're going to be a sculptor, or you're going to be in construction. And if you're the other kind, you're going to be a doctor. Uh, again, I guess it's little with the mixes, like they're firemen. So figure out what you like to do and go for it. The hardest part is, is deciding what you want to do. I kind of fell into it by default because of my dad losing his job. But I, but I took it further. Don't move out of your, oh, the other, another thing, uh, I realized, it take, you know, you're, you're a kid, you think you know everything. I got married when I was 20. I thought I knew everything. Looking back, I was, I was, a, I was an adult, I had a decent job, I was making some money, I bought a house at 22. But I didn't, I didn't know nothing. I, didn't, I really didn't, looking back, I, didn't, I just didn't know anything about life. But this, so I'm going to share a few things. If, if, this is for, for instance, you you got a job, a low-level job like we all start at, and you buy a car. Somehow you worked out your credit. That's another story about credit. But once you buy that car, you get these car payments, and you get these rent payments, and you get these food payments, and utility payments. You're stuck. You can't quit. You can't move on. I mean, you can, but it's, it's, it's really difficult. You need to be free to, to, to grow to get into a bigger, to a better job. I would suggest that if you've got your head together enough and you're watching this, don't move out of your house. Figure out what you want to do. Get a junk car. And as you get better, as you start making more money, then you can move out. Because you don't, once you're stuck with bills, you're a slave. You can't just say, I'm leaving. Unless you had saved up a bunch of money. That's another thing. You gotta save your money. You gotta, you can't live in fear on a job. You can't be, you can't, you can't grow because you're stuck. Try to save up six months money, how, no matter what it takes. You know, stop partying so much, stop buying brand new cars, Stop going on trips. You gotta look for the future. Sure, you're gonna suffer for three years, but you, in the rest of your life, you're gonna be living good. Anyway, 
Get along with people, everybody. Oh yeah, it brings up another story. So once I got in construction, you start making some friends. Because I tried, I tried to make friends. But, you, but then you, you just naturally, if you're around somebody all the time, like the military, you just start making buddies. And I guess construction is kind of like that military a little bit, is that you're always stuck together in the job site, working together, fighting, arguing. That's just part of it. Some days you had a bad day, some days they had a bad day. But then you start, but you start getting, you get, you get everybody's number, you keep it, you keep in touch. You know, you, you, maybe you go see them on a weekend or, even if you don't like them, there's some guys you're going to like more than others. But make friends with everybody. So the point is that in construction, you're building a house, let's say, and it lasts, I don't know, let's say it lasts six months, maybe, if you're lucky. The problem is the better you get, the, the faster they go. So, you know, some guys leave, some guys get fired. Uh, but if I realized that when it slowed down, I'd call up some, one of these, couple of these guys. And, you know, after you've been in the union and you've been here and you've been there and you've been with a few companies, that's what you do. You end up moving around. You call these people up and you say, hey, you got a job. Do you have any work? And they usually say, yeah, because, uh, because I had worked hard. I always worked hard and I'd always try to get along with them. And the same with me, they, they, they'd call me up and I'd say, yeah, come on. We made an effort to keep each other working. A, simple, a, couple, a few worth ethic, ethics that you have to have to succeed. And, you know, as the former, and I hire a lot of people. And you'd be surprised at the people that show up that don't have cars or they have, they, it, yeah, they don't have a car. They don't have a car. And so that means, I mean, I'm not going to hold it against them, but if they can't show up on time or they want to ask me for a ride, I can't do it. I'm too busy. So you got to have, you got to have a car. You can't have excuses. You got to show up on time. You got to leave on. You got to leave on time. You can't. If if you get off at three thirty, for instance, that's when we get off. You can't start picking up at. Picking up, picking up your tools. You can't start picking up early. Or you don't want to be the first one to start picking up for damn sure. You want to be the last. You want to be the first one there, the last one to leave, the first one, if they don't, everybody's going to break, you'd be the last one to take a break, the first one to end the break, the first last one that goes to lunch, the first one off of lunch. You, you're trying, I'm saying this because you need to show an effort because you're, you're an idiot. You don't know what you're doing. You need to, you got to have something that they, that these people want to keep you around. In my mind, it was it was saying to them, "This guy wants to work. He, he's trying. You know, he doesn't really know what he's doing, but he's he's showing up on time. He's not making up excuses. You know, if I did something wrong, I I say I I screwed up. Tell me how to fix it. That goes a long ways when you." got to be, you can't have a chip on your shoulder, and I, you know what, I probably could carry a chip, but I tried to keep it under control. Get along with everybody, try as hard as you can, always push your limits, always. Now a little nostalgic here, uh, when I was in high school, You know, I'm, like I said, I'm 64. They didn't have, they hadn't yet came out with calculators, as far as I remember. They didn't have calculators. I think answering machines came out in about the 70s sometime. I don't remember having an answering machine at first. There was no beep pagers, beepers, there was no cell phones, no computers. Uh, there was no cable TV. There was nothing. So if you called up somebody and they weren't home, that was it. There was no way to leave a message. And computers, you know, there was no computer classes. There were no computers. I'm just, again, I'm just, I'm just sharing this to say that I had the effort to learn. So I went to, uh, I never, I think there was a, uh, yeah, again, I was in Silicon Valley. It was exploding by this time. It was just, so there was lots of work. It, it also, it helps to be where there's work. I would say if you want to be uh, carpenter and you're able to move to where there's work 
where there's some words blowing up. And I just happened to be there. Uh, got sidetracked again. Looking outside, it's beautiful out there. So, oh yeah, I went to a computer show, I, I, I read some books, I bought some parts, I figured out how to put a computer together. And then I had it together, it was a, looking, thinking back, it was a 286 uh, with Microsoft DOS. I think it had a, a 40 megabyte hard drive or 20 and like one megabyte of RAM. So I get it together and I push the button and all it says is C prompt. Man, I didn't know what to do then. But I bought some books and I started to learn the menu, you know, the uh, DOS menu. Then they came out with something called Bulletin Board Service, which was before internet. You could dot, you use dial up modem. It, and I can remember seeing uh, Prodigy and AOL before the internet. But I taught myself computers. I just, this is the other thing about it, succeeding. Nobody owes you nothing. They owe you nothing. You owe them. They are putting you to work. If you have an attitude like, I deserve this and I deserve that, you're, you're in big trouble. So I taught myself computers and then Windows, I think it was Windows 3, I think it started. And I slowly, somehow, like on, when it got slow for a week or something, I just, I'd sit there in my pajamas all day just trying to figure out what the heck did. So, I, I wanted to know how to do it. So, I hope this helps somebody. It's kind of, it's me, I'm, I'm who I am. I used to be in really good shape, by the way. I didn't used to be hunched over. The years take a toll on you. So, now here I am at retirement age and getting back to this car. You, you know, you're always thinking, Man, I just can't wait to retire. I just can't wait for my vacation. But be honest with you, when my vacations came, I was usually bored. My hobby ended up being what, what construction because that was always that thing I wanted to push. But now that I'm in retirement age, and by the way, I did pretty good. That there's a shop that's paid for. I got a big house that's paid for. All my tools are paid for. I don't have any bills because I tried because I, I applied what I'm saying. I think I said it, get out of debt, or don't get yourself in debt, and then it becomes a habit. But you get to the retirement age and you don't know what to do with yourself. You know, at first you sit around and you go here and you go there and uh, you buy this and you buy that, but I found out no matter what I buy, it never makes me happy. It just, they don't satisfy me. What satisfies my life is to always do something that I've never done. So if you're gonna, if you're watching this and you're in your retirement years, or you're getting ready to retire, you better find a hobby. Because when I, all of a sudden I had nothing to do and I was bored, so I got I rebuilt. They got a Harley over here that I rebuilt, and I went through a few trucks that I rebuilt. I mean, not not heavy core like this, just transmissions, uh, brakes, uh, stuff like that. So then I decided, man, I. I, get, I always wanted, I always liked mechanics. So I went and looked at an IROC car. <clears throat> I said, I, I want to get me a hot car. It's kind of weird, a 64 year old guy, but, but I had a, I had a 69 Roadrunner once upon a time. And us old guys look back on uh, memories. <clears throat> so I looked at an IROC, it was for five, I talked the guy down to $5,000, it had an HO engine in it, it was all done, it was nice, and I looked at it and I go, no, if I buy it, what am I going to do with it? Just drive it around? That's not what I want to do. I want to push my limits. So I bought this piece of junk that was parked out in the uh, back of some guy's house in Washington. I'm in Washington now. And I'm just pushing it. Every day I'm pushing the limit. I'm, I'm just, uh, you know, that's why I make so many mistakes because I'm not these expert guys that are doing something. I mean, I could make videos on framing and I'd be the expert or trim but that it, I've already mastered it. it 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 bores me now now that I'm retired 
So if you want, if you do watch my videos, just keep in mind, I came from a paper boy that got beat up by everybody. Somehow I make good, local boy makes good. And here I am in a new state, by the way, I moved here five, ten years ago. I left all my friends behind, that was a mistake. And here it is, so, it's, uh, I hope that helps somebody. I don't know what else to say. Let me see if there's anything else I wanted to add. Uh, I talked about being on time. Talk, oh, credit. This is another important thing you gotta learn. This world runs by credit, unfortunately. So, it, it like, uh, shoot, I don't know. I must have been about 17. I, uh, you know, everybody gets magazines, and I was looking through these Honda motorcycle magazines. And they had a Honda 450. And I was thinking, man, I want one of those so bad. I had a, I had a bunch of other bikes. I had a mini bike. That was my first one. Then I had a Honda 55. I had a bunch of other things that I could never get running. Corvairs. Anyway, I asked my mother to co-sign. And for some reason, or my dad, I can't remember, and they did. So I, and somehow I was making the payments. I don't know how, but then I got in trouble and I couldn't make the payments. And I, you know, the temptation is just to like, forget it. Just screw them. I'm not going to pay it. I'm just going to keep it. But I decided I sold it, paid off the loan, and that helped me establish credit. So what I'm getting at is it, if you really want to get a house and, uh, and you want to get to this point where you buy these new cars, if you're into that or if you want to be able to get borrow money, which is a trap in itself, but if you want to do that, you got to start buy it, pay it off, buy it, pay it off. Even if even if you have cash, I would suggest in the beginning you buy it on credit and then pay it off in a couple of months. Make a couple of payments and then just keep building up. I got to the point where I had an 855 credit rating. And then I lost everything, but I don't want to get into that. But I built myself back up, and here I am. And, and by the way, I didn't do anything wrong. I just, something happened that I don't want to get into. Nothing illegal. And yeah, I've had my problem with, uh, I smoked weed, and I drank beer, and I did all that stuff. And I've been divorced. And uh, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's I hate to say it, it's part of life, but anybody that's been married their whole life, I gotta compliment you right now. It's a rare thing. Oh yeah, well, this is the last story, I promise. When I first got into the union, they told me, you know, that to me is kind of a funny story. They told me, go over there, see that guy over there? That's your partner. You know, I was thinking, man, that sounds, that sounds kind of gay to me, you know? I'm his partner? What does that mean? I didn't get it, but what I learned, and this I kind of said a little bit about it, is when you're working in certain jobs, and I'm not saying computers, but anything like construction, you need a partner, because uh, you, you, you know, I see a lot of people, that, they like to do everything themselves, you're never really going to make a lot, you're never really going to make a lot of money that way, in my opinion. If you, if, I'm not saying money is the drive, but you need a partner. For instance, if I had a partner here, which I can't afford, and I'm retired anyway, I would, you know, he'd help me tear the car apart, and then I'd say, go go clean those parts, go sandblast those parts, go order those parts, and he'd be, his job would be to feed me the parts, and my job would be to put it together, or vice versa. In construction, that's how it is. You start out carrying the lumber, but you're always helping each other. You can do things at least, I'd say, four times as fast. If, I, if I'm here right now and I'm working on this, and I need a tool, i got to stop. And I'm, let's say I'm laying down. i got to get up, go over there, get the tool, come back, lay down. Versus if i got another guy that's pretty good, he's just helping me. He's feeding me this stuff. Pretty soon you get to a point where you can almost read each other's minds. It's great. And you become really good friends. 
Anyway, that's it. I hope this didn't bore anybody. But anybody can make it. You gotta do what you like and you gotta push your limits. And I guess I had a drive to be in charge. No, yeah, I had a drive to be in charge only because I worked for so many people that were so stupid in, in my mind that I wanted to do it better. I wanted to, they weren't, or they weren't working hard enough. I wanted to go fast. I always had this thing in me like a motor running, like, like I couldn't turn it off, like an engine. Chug, 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 you know, go, go, go. And some guys are just aren't like that. And I was that guy. Now that I'm getting old, you know, I got a problem with my hip, that hurts a little bit, my feet hurt, my neck hurts. This belly here is because when I was in construction, you could you probably burn, if you work really hard, you probably burn 6,000 calories a day. You can eat anything you want. You could eat, I mean, anything, and you never gain a pound. The problem is once you stop, you, you got this eating habit that you can eat anything, and all of a sudden you look at yourself, like I didn't really even really realize it until I started making these videos. I'm this big fat guy now, and it's, I, I'm still having trouble breaking. Even if I eat less, it's, it's like it, it doesn't work. It's like I have to get down to 1,000 calories or something, or 500. I just can't do it. So another thing for you old guys, if you're going to get retired, you better learn to start eating less. That's it. Ah, oh, see? Ugh.